Hey, hi, hello, how are you? Uh, it's been a long time since I posted a video. I apologize for that. Uh, I've been super busy building this studio and cranking out orders, so I didn't really have a lot of time to shoot videos, but today I am here to show you my brand new space, and I'm so excited for it, um, and I hope you are too, because it's been a long time in the making. Before we start though, I wanted to show you where I started Leathercraft, where I just, you know, I, I had that urge to make stuff out of leather. I didn't necessarily have a place to make it, so I started in the furnace room of my house. It's kind of, you know, snowballed from there. It went to a few other rooms in my place, but I'm here now, and I just wanna show you that progression. And just to encourage you that you can start really small and humble, and then you can just, you know, grow your business to the point where you can be able to be in a space that you like, that you can create. So. Without further ado, let's get to the furnace room. So here we are in the furnace room, my first Leathercraft studio I ever had, and it's just gorgeous. I mean, if you love the show Hoarders, you'll love this part, but this is where I first started Leathercraft. So I used to keep my tools in these little leather strap things I made, um, you know, just for quick access. This was the actual table I did all my Leathercraft on. It's huge. Just kidding, it's probably like two and a half feet by four feet. It did the trick. I also use the deep freezer. You know, you can see all the, the dye that I've spilt over the years. And I used to use these little fire stops as my shelving for my dyes, my tools, anything Leathercraft related. So Leathercraft does not have to be fancy. So after doing Leathercraft for like, you know, a year or so down here, I decided that I had to get a proper space to do my work in because this just was not cutting it. You know, if I wanted to start taking photos of me doing work, I had to get a prettier space so people didn't think that their stuff was, you know, getting made in a dungeon. All right, workshop number two. We're in the electrical room, so it's an upgrade from the furnace room, I guess. But I made this little C-shaped desk here. I just made it to, to facilitate all of my tools and my, and my dyes and paints and all that stuff. And it did really well. I had this for about a year or so uh, until I grew out of this space. I had a couple machines behind us here, um, but it just wasn't cutting it in terms of, you know, the size that I needed. I had still, you know, lots of things all over the house and I wanted them in one room. So I moved to a third room and we're going to go check that out right now. You probably know this room from all of my YouTube videos. This is the room where I started my YouTube in and it kind of feels surreal to be out of this room because this would be the place where I would come every day to do work and YouTube. It's a little weird being here right now, to tell you the truth. Uh, there's so many memories made in here, uh, so many friendships, so many people that I brought here to show the studio to, and now I it's a pantry. It's, you know, for food and stuff, and there's like a, there's a fridge in here. So it's, it's weird. I never really said goodbye to this space. This is where it all kind of ramped up. All the production ramped up here. YouTube took off here, and I'm thankful now to have a bigger space, but feels good to be back down here sometimes. So we're back in the studio now, and I would love to take you on a tour of this place and just talk to you about some of the design choices I made, some of the furniture choices I made, and just kind of show you what the functionality is of all the different spaces here. I would love to officially welcome you to the Little King Goods Leathercraft YouTube Studio. Okay, so the first place on this tour is where I house this clicker press. This is a 2,500 pound press, and it was designed to stay in this part of the studio. It does have casters where it can roll around, um, but it just stays here because it's just so heavy. Over here is where I keep all of my cutting dies for all of my wallets, journals, and bags. Different dies or patterns I'll keep at different heights. The ones that I use the most, obviously, I'll keep at waist height, so I can just quickly transfer them over to the machine without skipping a beat and it just makes production super smooth. So after clicking out the patterns, I can put them on here. This table, it's by a company called Fully, 
and this is on casters so I can quite easily just roll it over to wherever I have to put it and boom, perfect. Fits perfectly, it's four feet across and I think it's about two feet this way. So it's perfect with my setup here and I love it. All right, after all the patterns are cut out, I take them over to my workbench, which is right here and I assemble them all on these awesome marble slabs that I have here. Marble is so great, marble quartz or granite for doing leather craft because it doesn't scratch the leather and it is a perfect surface, a very hard surface that you can like glue and you know do all the things you have to do with leather craft. All the tables that I've crafted in this workshop are custom for me. The depth of them, the height of them, um, they're also all on casters because I wanna be able to move them around the workshop and not be limited to, to what I can use this space for. So casters are key, especially if you wanna be moving this and transforming the space to your desire. So, casters. Over here, I've got my sewing and skiving machines. This one here is a flatbed Juki 1508N. It's an incredible machine, I love it so much. It does most of my work. This one here is a skiving machine. It thins out the edges of the leather so you can roll the edges or thin out leather. And this one here is a Texo 5100. This thing is a beast. I use it to make my satchels and any heavy duty straps or belts or things of that nature that I need that extra power and I love it. This area over here is where I keep all of my burnishing machines, my hot stamping machines, my sanding machines, my other clicker press that I have here. I chose to put all of my machines here. That way I have accessibility to the, all of them. Whenever I need them, I know exactly where they are and I just think it looks cool. They're all spaced out perfectly and just aesthetically pleasing. I love it, I love that part. On to the shipping area of the shop. This place here is where my wife, Ruth, she will do all of the packaging and all of the label printing and all of the, you know, the stuff that takes a lot of work to do that she just really helps and frees me up. She's really good at it and thankful for her. Thank you, sweetheart. This place is her domain and her realm and it's normally the tidiest one out of all the spaces because when I'm working, it's, it kind of just looks like a tornado went through here. All right, I just wanted to quickly talk about this table that I have here. I've wanted a table like this for a very long time, but the space that I had previously just couldn't hold it. It was way too small. And so I built a huge table. It's an eight foot by four foot table, and it holds all of my leather underneath here in these sauna tube, concrete tube things. And I just love it. I'm, I love the freedom. I love being able to roll out an entire hide place it on the table and just be able to look at the hide and see the imperfections and be able to cut around them um, just by rolling it out fully. I don't have to roll it out in sections. So that is huge and that is key. Okay, this next space I rarely use because I'm always working, but it's my lounge. I love this thing. I think I like looking at it more than I like being in it just because I feel like when I'm sitting in it, I'm not doing enough work and there's a lot of work to be done, but I should probably learn to relax and just and, and use it, so let's go sit down. Oh, yes. Oh. All right, the last space in this workshop that I wanna talk about is my office. And this office is a dream office for me. I love, it's just an open concept. I've got exactly what I need. Fully is a company, a furniture company that makes standing desks that go up and down. They also carry incredible chairs that are super supportive for your back. And they also make accessories for your feet, like massagers. I'm gonna be doing another video just on my Fully setup because I'm so excited to tell you about it. It has definitely changed my life and the way that I work. So stay tuned for that video. Okay, by now I think you all know just how much I love online learning and how it has completely changed my life. I mean, me sitting here in this brand new space is proof of it. Skillshare is an incredible online learning community that offers memberships with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. One of the best things about Skillshare is that you can learn whatever you want, whenever you want, wherever you want. Since it's an online community, you can fit Skillshare into your busy lifestyle, and with an annual subscription that is less than $10 a month, it is incredibly affordable, especially compared to those in-person workshops and classes. Whether you are into photography, illustration, culinary, marketing, you name it, 
Skillshare has got you covered. One class that I really enjoyed was called Storytellers for Leaders, How to Craft Stories That Matter by Keith Yamashita. For me running a brand and doing YouTube, it's always important to know how to convey your ideas and thoughts to your audience in a way that makes sense and that is engaging. Keith lays things out simply and clearly. It was easy to follow and it definitely got those creative juices flowing. Since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, they are giving you two months of unlimited access to this incredible life-changing opportunity. Join the community by clicking the link below and start that two free month trial today. Make 2020 a year where you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes what you find just might surprise and inspire you. And it just might change your life. All right, guys, let's get back to the video. One material that I wanted to make sure that I had in this space was brick. No matter how I got it in here, I wanted it in here. I searched for many different places for brick online, and there was a few companies that did veneer, but they were super expensive. They were all the way in the States. It just didn't make sense for me to spend all that money to import it. So I was actually running out of ideas what to do. I was thinking about making my own brick veneer, but then I found a company called Soho Brick and they're in Toronto, Ontario, or Toronto if you're not from over here. Their stuff, their product was insane. Probably the best brick veneer I've ever seen. The brick veneer is kind of like a backsplash. It's put on mesh and you glue it onto the wall and then you pipe it with mortar and it just comes out super beautifully, just so gorgeous. I was so happy with it. It does take a lot of work, but in the end you have such a gorgeous product and I definitely recommend Soho Brick to anybody who wants to have a brick veneer. Soho Brick is so, so, ho, good. <laughs> that was good, I just made that up. One of the most important elements of making a space look cozy or homey or whatever is the lighting and lighting is so key. You can have so many different feels or moods just because of what kind of light you are putting in your space. So for this space, I went with 20 pot lights up on the ceiling, and then I went with a whole bunch of wall sconces all the way around so I could make this place really moody and set it to how I like it or how I'm feeling that day. If I wanna be very concentrated, I could put all the lights on like they are on now, but if I wanted to just kind of have a quieter day and just work at my bench, I could turn the main lights off and just have these wall sconces on. And they're all controlled by the Philips Hue bridge, so I can control all the lights in here with my cell phone. There is a lot of work that went into this space that I haven't talked about, so I think I'm just gonna do a montage of some really cool B-roll so you can see some of the behind the scenes that went into this space. Let's roll that B-roll. Thank you. 
That's a wrap, guys. Thank you for coming on the tour with me. I hope you enjoyed this space. I know that I do. There's one thing that you can do for me. I haven't named this space yet. I don't know what to call it. I keep calling it the studio or the workshop or what do I call it? The LKG headquarters, the space, the loft, the place, the hang, I don't know what to call it. So why don't you leave it in the comments below and tell me what you think of this space, your favorite part of the space, and what to name the space. And maybe I just might take one of your suggestions and officially call it that. Also, if you were part of the Peter McKinnon giveaway, the one where he came to my shop and tested out the 1DX Mark III, at the end of that video, we talked about giving away a wallet and a keychain. I'm gonna be giving these away on Instagram, so follow at Little King Goods and you will see who the winner is. You had to comment on my latest video, the one where I made that minimalist card wallet, what you liked about this shop. I'm gonna pick a winner, but I'm announcing it on Instagram. Again, thank you for hanging out today. I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And remember, just do what you were born to do. Keep at it. Don't give up. And you never know what you can accomplish. For now, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.